victory belongs to Jesus. Victory, glory, honor, power, and praise belong to Jesus. Be my glory ever till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river on the cross. Jesus the Nazarene yes and I just wonder how he could love me a sinner contemned as unclean oh how marvelous how wonderful and my song shall ever be how wonderful how marvelous is my savior's love for me father we love you for sending Jesus. Lord Jesus, we appreciate you for coming, going through all those terrible pain, anguish, trauma for our sake. You who knew no sin, you became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We love you. We want to consecrate our lives afresh to you, even this hour. Take us as we are. Consecrate us fresh, O oh God. Use us, O oh God, to bring glory and honor to your name. As we open your word, I pray, in the name of Jesus, by the power of your spirit, you will teach us about this ultimate miracle all the glory will be yours in Jesus mighty name we pray and receive amen, amen. praise the Lord praise the Lord it's a delight to be here again and uh, to see all those that we walk together I mean many of those that we walk together in those years still you know Firing on. The Bible says, it says, I have no greater joy than to see, to know that my children are walking in the truth. From time to time, I see many of our Yaba brethren. Some are, have come to life, you know. Um, not too long ago, I saw one. And my day was just made. He said, ah, you were my pastor. I was saved when you preached one message. And it was, you know, on and on and on. I said, all right, what are you doing now? I'm a Zona superintendent. Ah, I said, praise the Lord. You know, these are the things that feel. And many of, um, last uh, month, I was uh, invited to Life Chapel District for a seminar, worker seminar. 
and uh, after the seminar or before the seminar another one came to me and said ah you were my pastor i said hey all right praise god where is he yeah but what are you doing now i am the treasurer of life chapel so i said ah i nearly jumped up so i said praise god the lord is good they're all making waves all over the places and we will all uh, serve Jesus and we will make heaven in the name of Jesus. Ultimate miracle is the theme. And uh, that theme really is talking about the substance, the riches. All the blessings and the benefits put together that Christ has paid for and then now released to all believers. That's the meaning of ultimate sacrifice. You know, the, like the prophets talked about the, uh, the time of the sufferings of Christ and the blessings or the benefits that we follow. You know, that's the ultimate sacrifice. As it were, is about the risen living Christ who by his spirit makes his presence real to us. By his spirit makes his power functional in us. By his um, promises or through his promises, enable us to live dynamically, fulfillingly, as we claim and appropriate the blessings or the promises that he has given to us. That's really the meaning of uh, the ultimate of this is talking about the special ministry of Jesus Christ through his spirit to make his presence, his power, and his promises active, real, functional. And dynamically fulfilling in our lives. That's the ultimate promise. That's the ultimate miracle of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we see how this works out in our text. I will read from Luke chapter 24. We are giving just chapter, verse 6. We I crave your indulgence to read from verse 6 to 8. And even add verse 8. 44. Luke chapter 24 from verse 6. Speaking of Jesus, he is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. Verse 44 amplifying that thought says he then said to them these are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. Back to verse 8. And after he has spoken all these things, explained to them, you know, verse 8 now said, and they remembered his word. This is the ultimate miracle. It's talking about all that Jesus has paid for through his agony, his suffering, and his death, and transferred, as it were, to our account, to
to enjoy the riches and the benefits of his suffering, death, and uh, resurrection. I am trusting that as we go through the word of God, you will not only receive the riches of the benefits, you will be transformed from glory to glory in the name of Jesus. You'll be transformed. I, I just trust God because I believe God gave that promise to me that somebody will be transformed today. From glory to glory is changing me. Changing me. He is changing me. From earthly things to the heavenly. The love of God shown to the world is changing, changing me from earthly things to the heavenly. His image and likeness to pet in me. The love of God shown to the world that's what Jesus died for to transform you and I for us to receive the fullness of his blessings that is summarized in love all the blessings of Christ is, is, that we receive from him from his suffering is, is love the love that's why Ephesians says that you may you may you may know the love of Christ that passes understanding. Say so that you may experience the breadth, the length, the depth, and the riches. I mean, and the height. And to know the love of Christ that passes understanding until you are full or filled with all the fullness of love. The love of God will overwhelmingly fill you and begin to transform you from glory to glory after this service in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That's what we are here to receive. This wonderful transforming power that the Lord Jesus bought for us. Now, as it works out, there are Three main things I want to highlight today. And they are all in the passage we've read. About this ultimate miracle. About this miracle life of God. That Jesus through his sufferings and death makes possible for every follower. The miracle life of God be, begins to, to, to be your experience through the suffering and the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You know? And there are three things I want to highlight to that effect. One is the, that's how this thing works out. How the suffering and death and the, all that he went through, you know, how they become transferred to you. Through his presence, his power, and his promises. The first thing, there, there are about three things I want to highlight. The first one is about the scriptural revelation of Jesus as the model. Scriptural revelation of Jesus as the model for the miracle of God. The miracle life of God. The miracle life that God has proposed and has given us and is made possible through Jesus Christ. The scriptural revelation of Jesus as the model. Of the miracle life of God. He died to make possible for every follower. The second one will be. 
the supernatural manifestation of Jesus, supernatural manifestation of Jesus as the God-man, the majestic, mysterious mediator. And sent to the earth as savior. The son of God became man. You know how all those ones happened? And then he, he came, he suffered, and he died. And he rose again, confirming the fact that he is the son of God. The one and only qualified to save us from sin. Like the Bible says in Romans chapter 1 verse 4. That although he was rooted in history as descendant, as um, descending from the lineage, the family line of David, but as to his unique identity as the son of God, he is announced, declared by the spirit of holiness through the resurrection from the dead. Alright, so we're going to be talking about the scriptural revelations of Jesus as the model of this miracle life that is bought for us. You know? And then we're going to be talking about the supernatural manifestation of Jesus as the God man, the mediator, the God man, you know, sent to be the one that will be the Messiah, the only one that is qualified to save us. And this was confirmed by the resurrection from the dead. Then, and each of these, this, we will have to answer one major question under each of these topics, of these subtopics. I will ask and we answer one major question under each of these topics. The third one will be the specific action. Specific action that, that um, activates God's uh, life of miracle. The miracle life of God. The, the specific action. This for us now. That activates the miracle life of God that Jesus bought for us. We went through all those agony to, be, to bring for us. The, 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 the specific action that activates this miracle life in your life. In my life. Like I said, we'll be asking... And answering one major question under each of these topics. The first one, the major question is, what makes Christianity more than just a religion? What makes Christianity more than religion or more than philosophy? What is that unique thing that makes Christianity, you know, more than religion, you know? More than all these religious formalities, activities, whatever, you know? Because by the time we go through this thing, it will take us beyond religion to the miracle life of God. Amen. To take us beyond religion. To the, as, by the time we are through, by God's grace, by the Spirit of God, religion will not mean so much to you. The miracle life of God, made possible through Christ and His Spirit in you, will mean everything to you. Praise the Lord. Alright, so what makes Christianity more than a religion or more than a philosophy? It is the scriptural revelations about Jesus as the one who alone 
came to reveal God to us. And to reveal who we are called to be in God. As his offspring. It is, it is that scriptural revelation that Jesus came to show us who God is, what God is like. Came also to make us, to help us to know who we are called to be as the offspring of God. You know, as soon as Adam and Eve were expelled from the Garden of Eden, the image of God began to be distorted and confused. You will see, that's what Paul addressed in like uh, Romans chapter 1. He said, although you have every, I mean we, even by the invisible revelation of God, at the visible revelations of God, of all he has created, we have reason to, to know who God really is. He says, but, you know, Romans chapter 1, I think from verse 21 and following, he says, but people through their vain imaginations, they have left the glory of God and they are imagining, you know, they are thinking and making the image of God like unto corruptible man and beasts and birds and even creeping things. What does that mean? You know, although we have enough to make us know that God can be, I mean, God can be like that, you know, like those people, you know, like in the Babylonian era when yeah, they were worshipping who was that man, you know. Um, Nebuchadnezzar, or like in the Roman era when they were worshipping Caesar as the Lord, you know, or like in other nations, some, some continents where they worship, you know, four-footed beasts, like some worship cows, some worship creeping things like snake. And so the, Paul was trying to challenge, you have no reason to be thinking that about, you were created as his offspring, so God who made you cannot be likened to those things. And anyway, so, after thousands of years, the image, the true image of God became so what? And so distorted and so confounded that God had to send his son, Jesus Christ, to reveal, hallelujah, himself. To reveal himself. That's why the greatest biblical fact in history, in human history, is that Jesus shows us God. The greatest news ever transmitted to the human to humankind is the news that God is like Jesus. Praise the Lord. Jesus came to reveal the true image of God. That's why the Bible says in John chapter 1 verse 18 no man has seen God at any time. The only begotten son at his bosom. He has revealed him. He has declared him. He has announced him. He has explained him. So Jesus came to reveal God. The true living God. And of course, by implication also, to reveal who we are called, we, the offspring of God, who we are called to be as people who are the children of God. And who is that? Who can tell me what that is? You are called to be what? God. Jesus specifically won't declare that in Psalm 82 verse 6. You are God's. Being children of the Most High. 
All right, so Jesus came to reveal who God is, who he is, and who we as his offspring are called to be. To be like God. Manifest like God. You know? Do things like God. That's why Jesus said, you know, using himself as an example. And I want you to know from the beginning, everything Jesus said about his rapport with God the Father, you can say the same thing. Everything Jesus said, everything Jesus claimed regarding his rapport, his relationship with God, you can claim the same thing, you can say the same thing, you can accept the same thing for yourself. We don't do that sometimes we think it's sacrilege. No. So when Jesus came, for instance, in John chapter 10 verse 30, he says, I and the Father, we are what? Oh, we are one. Can you say that of yourself? Yes. Hey, people, you are not talking. I say, say yes. I and the Father, we are what? Oh, hallelujah. He's the Emmanuel. God with us. He needs your flesh. He puts his spirit in you. And you become partners to do his kingdom work on earth. I and the Father, we are one. In John chapter 10 also, verse 38, Jesus continuing this thought line. He said, I want you to know and believe that the Father is in me and I am hold, oh, I'm in the Father. John chapter 14. Verse 19, because he lives, you too will live. Hallelujah. Hey, praise the Lord. Because he lives, you know, that kind of life of God, you also are qualified. In fact, you are called to, you are entitled to live as God. Hallelujah. Anywhere you go to. Believe, you know, you are there as God. You are carrying the presence. You are carrying indeed the essence of God. What of this? John chapter 14, verse 23. If any man loves me, he will keep my word. And my father will love him. And we will come. And have our abode in him. No. Not just me or my father. But we will come now. That is the fullness of the God. We will come now. Because the spirit is the one that works out all these things in you. He will come and establish our headquarters in you. Praise the Lord. If you know who you are through Jesus Christ. You know. You are God's. And his resurrection, you know, came to confirm all these things. You are God's. It means you carry the weight, you carry the wealth, you carry the wisdom of the Almighty God through Jesus Christ. You carry the weight. That is <laughs> the, the power. In Greek is doza, the glory, you know, Shekinah in Hebrew, the, the essence of God is in me through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I carry the weight. You know, that's why I trample, according to his promise, I trample on serpents and scorpions and all of all the, the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by enemies do what to hurt. Ah, can anything hurt God? You carry the weight of God. You, 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 you are God in this sense. Through Jesus Christ. You carry that weight. You carry the wealth. Deuteronomy chapter 28. 10. 
and 12. Talking about the blessings that the Lord, the living God, who gives richly. First Timothy 6, 17. He gives richly to all his own. You know? Everything. To what? To, to enjoy. So not only you carry the weight, you carry the wealth. In those two verses that I referenced, you know, he says, the Lord your God will open unto you his good treasure. The heavens to give you rain on your land and bless every work of your hand. So you will lend, you will not borrow. And verse 10, back to verse 10, he says, you will, he said, the whole, the people of the whole earth will see with this blessing. They will see that you are called by the name of the Lord, your God, who can finish it. They will be afraid of you. Hallelujah. Ah, when you carry God. Hey, hey. My wife used to say, Ajanaku Koja Osokwe Uri Uri Konfiri. Ajanaku does not kaja, then you see, you see something. No, no, no. When Ajanaku, Ajanaku is elephant. When Ajanaku, Ajanaku kaja, ah, he will shake the whole place. You will be shaking and making waves everywhere you go now. In the name of Jesus. You know, back in the village, my junior sister, she was teaching at a neighboring village to our own village you know when you say village or village you know that's ile ilukon do you know ile ilukon all right in that village they had they used to have one ceremony where a, a their chief masquerade comes out and it comes out only every three years ah that masquerade hmm, to show the power when they are cooking him, you know, quote and unquote, when they are cooking him, they take him to that oracle house, you know, is there. They will take mortar, you know, mortar, you know, the one you use in pounding yam, as they are, as he's getting ready to come, they will take mortar, knock it us in head. We say, ooh, ooh, ooh. Ah, power. Take it again. Now on his ah. when it comes out, hey, you can imagine the the devilish aura. Women don't dare get out to sight him. They should not a woman should not see, you know, that masquerade. But my sister was coming back from school on the day this one was to come out. You know, apparently maybe she was caught on her way or whatever, but she was returning from, you know, and you know in the village is a footpath, you know. And so the masquerade with the left in Abbey, what do they call them? You know, he has left the oracle. They were following him. And they spotted my sister. Ha. Hey, that's like an abomination. And that, that person should go in for it immediately. But you know what happened? As they saw her, the people that were following, you know, they have the same power, they have the same everything. They said, they put, they, they talked to the alimi. We call it alimi. We call masquerade in my language. In the door, alimi. The alimi, hey, bow the, leave the road door. So it was the enemy that had to be pushed into the bush. They said, Pastor's wife is coming. Pastor's wife is coming. Hey, eh, 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 hey, every ugly evil power will give way for you in the name of Jesus. You are God's through Jesus Christ. That's who you are. 
So it is the revelation that Jesus came to show us about God and about who we, his offering, I mean his offspring, his children, are called to be in this world. Like I said, the weight of glory and power and honor and dignity. And the wealth and the wisdom we are supposed to be carrying by virtue of our being the offspring of God. That's what Jesus came to do for us. From now on, may that be evident in your life. In the name of Jesus. That is why, to come back to our question, that's why Christianity is more than what to, it's more than religion. That's why it's more than philosophy. You know? It is the miracle, it is experiencing the miracle life of God. All right, the second, something that I highlighted about the supernatural, um, the supernatural manifestation of Jesus that confirms he is the Saint Messiah, Saint Mediator, Saint and the only one qualified to save us from sin. And he, this, this truth was confirmed you know, by the resurrection from the dead. Like we quoted from Romans chapter 1 verse 4. Though descending from the lineage of David in the flesh, yet he was declared and announced to be the son of God by the spirit of holiness through the resurrection from the dead. Now the question, the question, can, listen to it, can Christian rituals and Christian ceremonies and Christian, you know, we call them now a spiritual services. No, what, what do they call them? You know, those from money devotions, your family devotions, to preaching and teachings and prayer meetings. Oh, can, listen to the question, and you try to answer it first. Can Christian rituals the Catholic will talk about sacraments. Can Christian rituals, Christian sacraments, sacred things that they engage in activities, Christian ceremonies, without miracle, or let me rephrase it, do Christian ceremonies and rituals and all those sacred whatever they do or we do, do, without miracles, do they have life-changing power? Do Christian ceremonies, Christian even services, you know, preaching, teaching, naming ceremonies, all those ones, you know, baptism and all those, you know, and sacra, I mean, in the Catholics, they have so many of them. They have one they call extreme auction. That's the one for the dead. Well, some, all right. But can these ceremonies without miracle or do these ceremonies and rituals and all those sacred activities carried out in the name of God, you know, including the one we do even in the house of God and the do they without miracle have life changing power? Everybody say a resounding no. Jesus Christ was demonstrated to be who he claimed to be by that unique miracle. A 
And what demonstrates you to be who you claim to be and who God has really called you to be is miracle. Praise the Lord. Miracle. That's why Paul says in First Corinthians, he says, I came to you not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of power and the spirit. Hallelujah. It is this miracle demonstration that changes things. And through the spirit, the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 11, if the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised Jesus from the dead will also quicken or give you life. Not that's the miracle life they are talking about. We give you this miracle life by his spirit. We dwell in you. Supernatural manifestation is what the world needs. The miracle changing power through the spirit of God. That flows through you. It's what Jesus Christ called us to experience and to pass on to reflect his own glory and populate heaven. May you begin to operate at that level in Jesus' name. Paul says, I did not come to you with sweet words of human wisdom, but I came with the demonstration of the power and the spirit of God. He says so that your faith will not rest upon the wisdom of man, but upon what? Oh, the power of God. And I know that is real. Oh, I know that is real. I know the power of God. Beginning, I've experienced this miracle power of God. Beginning with my own salvation. You know? Is the spirit of God using the word of God to bring about these life-changing circumstances, you know, that we call miracle. That, that I have experienced it. That evening, when I went for Bible study at Hughes Avenue, you know, a missionary used to teach then. I went there and they, you know, after teach, I did not take any note to we used to close around about nine or so. Or I get home. I was living at about Macaulay. I get home at about nine. That evening, after coming back, ah, without note, I could not sleep. It was as if the Lord opened a screen in my heart. And everything they quoted, I mean most of them, let me not exaggerate, they quoted we are coming. The soul that sin it, it shall die. Ah. Repent and believe the gospel. And refreshing or something will come from the presence of God. Ah. All those things will come. You know, from about nine. I'm not lying, you know. I remember it almost as if it was yesterday. From about nine till 3 a.m. This thing was coming on. The power of the world in the hand of the Spirit was using relevant verses to talk to me, to prick my heart, to tell me about the need for repentance, for change in life. Ah. Do you know why it stayed long? I knew what they were asking me to do. My sin, like I would always say, was promiscuity, immorality. You know, girlfriend, yeah, girlfriend. Ah, you know, when, when I say such things now, anyway, I pray. They say this old man with bald head and, you know. But that was my, that was my sin. It was hammering the thing. Ah, ah, ah. I know, although I've never read the definition of repentance or heard any preaching, or, but I knew what, you know. When the Spirit of God gives you a word, ah, there is absolute certainty. Are you following? You, you will be certified this is from God. 
and it's to you. And it's often mingled with an anticipation to do something about it. Something that, you know, oh Jesus, you do. Ah. But I was arguing. Because I knew they were telling me, the girlfriend at the Kenne High School, you know, the one in uh, 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 Agrican, this one. The, you know, the, I knew, but I was arguing. We go, eh? Lord, because that was my life. That, ah. Until about 3 a.m., hallelujah. I said, all right, yes, Lord. I will write to each of them. That time, you know, it's not the digital world that we have now. No, it's letter, you know. I will write to each one of them, say, I not do again, oh, I beg. Ah! Immediately I said that, I had peace. Share, share. Inu mi do. Ayo kunu okomi. Hallelujah. Don't for it yet. I had peace. I had joy. You know, that's what the Bible says about the kingdom life. That is God reigning in your life by his spirit. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 17, he said the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it is righteousness, power for righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. If you have not experienced that, may today be your day. So I know the power of God. Through the spirit of God. To change life. And I have experienced it with my junior brother. My junior brother, all of you know him. Or most of you should know Sylvester. He came from the village also. He was living with me. When he came, his son was not women or whatever. His son, he was, he was a rich junkie. He was, you know, he was already smoking Igbo. Before he came. And when he came to our house at Idiaraba, there were Igbo smokers too. So they teamed up together. You know, I will be telling him, look, please, let, we are Catholics from Catholic background. Let's go to our church as soon later, you know, first place. Ah, he will just be annoyed. He said, Catholic, this, you know, he, the Pope is there. We are, this is the real church and the rest. Ah, in fact, he said there was a day he wanted to beat me up. So we told this, ah, I know he's bigger than me, more muscular, you know. Only God saved me that he didn't carry out that one. Praise the Lord. But then, he used to Join me in the morning devotions. Because from our home, even as Catholic, we used to pray. So when I say, all right, let's pray, you know, and then we do morning devotion. Do you know how God, hey, one morning, we did that devotion. I think it was on a Sunday, and he left, you know. He, was, he said he was going to his church or something, his Catholic or something. But he said, in the bus, Somebody was preaching and the spirit of God was using about the same passage or the same words he gave us in our devotion. You know God knows how to arrest his own. Ah! Sylvester said, huh? You know, he was almost afraid. Which who, who, Leo did not tell these people. See what, and you know, you know when the word is coming, especially to a sinner, to arrest, to convict, ah! It's always powerful and stingy. And like he said, he will cut to the... Ah! He was, his heart was cut to the, He was cut. To, he said, ah, let me go to this, my brother's church today. Save you. That's how he came to the church that Sunday and he was saved. There is power. Power. Miracle changing power to change lives. And we are asked to, you know, after experiencing it, demonstrate it. Pass it on. Minister with that same power. That raised Jesus from the dead. And I have been experiencing it over, over, and over, and over, and over. For I've trusted and tasted. And I've tried it. And I know God's promise is true. I know God's promise about the miracle changing power. I know it's true. In my teachings, in my preaching, in this church, in this this year, by I mean, it was in the, it was in this setting, not this setting, not you know. There was a message the Lord gave me, you know, and ah, 
It bordered on cultism. I'm just talking about the power of the Spirit of God using the good news, the word of God, you know, to arrest and bring about miracle changing experience in the life of people. That message, after the, the message, there were two opposite reactions. One, somebody wrote to my senior pastor. Hey, five minutes more. Somebody wrote to my senior pastor and said they should warn that young man. How can he be talking about this and this and this one? But you see, the, another positive something came out from that. Another person they sat in the same message or oh, under the same message. Another person immediately after that message, I remember, you know, as if it was yesterday, is now a pastor. Came to me and said, please, sir, or please, pastor, I am a member of the Ekanka. I have incense in my house. I have books. From this message, I want to do away with them. I want to burn them. Can you please follow me to go and burn them? I say, ah, praise God. Ephesians chapter 19 is happening again. We went. When we bring out one lump of incense, you say, hey, pastor, if you know how much this thing costs, hmm, but we burnt all of them. Praise the Lord. I said he, 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 became, he, he, he became trained for the, the ministry. There is power, life-changing power in the spirit of God that Jesus Christ has. All right, so the, the first two we've dealt with, the first question is, what makes Christianity more than religion or a philosophy? Then the second, do Christian rituals and Christian ceremonies and what have you do they, without miracles, have life-changing power? If not, what are you going to do with them? Or what are you going to do about incurring, bringing that life-changing power? There is a price to pay. Alright, now, this, the third one, the third subtopic that I said I will address has to do with the specific action that does what to that bets the or brings out the miracle life of God in you. The question is, what switches the body? What unlocks the miracle life of God in you? What switches the thing and causes? it to function in you. You want to know? Submissive will to the will of God. That's why in John chapter, I mean in the passage we read on that 44, Jesus took time again to be analyzing. You know, I have already told you that that all the things that are written in the law, in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me, they must be what? Oh, they must be fulfilled. He was trying to tell them, look, all these things about my agony, my pain, all those ones that are written in the law. I have to submit my what? Oh, my will to God's will for it to happen. Otherwise, the, the blessing I came to bring to the world will not, you know, like the Bible says in John chapter 12, verse 24, except a wheat of, I mean, a, a seed of wheat falls to the ground and dies. It abides water alone. But when it dies, you know, Jesus was trying to say, just like I had to submit my will to the Father. You know, in Hebrews chapter 1, he says, sacrifices and offerings you do not desire. Bone of prince and all this sacrifice. You have no desire. You have no pleasure for them. He said, but as is written of me in the volume of the book, a body you have what to prepare for me. And I am responding. I have come to do what to 
to do thy will, O Lord. What unlocks the miracle life of God in the individual believer? It is submitting your will to the will of God. Listen, I please just give me some minutes, you know, to explain this third point. Very, very vital. You know, the human will is the most powerful thing God ever created. The human will. Very, very, very powerful. So powerful that not even God controls it. God does not control the human will. Why? Because the human will or the will by its very nature implies self-control. That's what God has given. So the human will is very, very precious and also very, very dangerous. Precious because God gave you what he himself possesses. The will. Ability to command, to choose, to do this thing, you know. But dangerous. Because with the gift of the will to you is also the ability for you to use even the will God has given you against him. God gave you his will intending that he will use your will to fulfill his will. The human will is God's agency of his kingdom administration in the world. He intends to use your will to do his will. But it, the problem is, is your will. He wouldn't force you. That is why when just like Jesus you remember the coronation declared in Philippians he who had the nature of God himself praise the Lord is you know is God or very God Abi you no know? um, Philippians chapter 2 reading from verse 5 to about 11 Yet, he did not count it robbery to be equal with God. Instead, he did what? To, he submitted his will. He became a man. You know? Relinquished all the glory of the, the God, whatever nature and something. Became a man for the function, for the work he was sent to do. He came to do. That's why he said, I came, you know, I came submitting my body, you know, my will. Or whatever, ah, and the Bible says, ah, God was so pleased that He gave him a name above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow, every tongue must confess that Jesus is the Lord. So, what unlocks the miracle life of God that He intends for you to experience and enjoy and pass on? Submission of your will to him. Submission of your will. When you do that, you know, anywhere God finds any one of his children who is humble enough, totally submissive enough to give, ah, God will make him or her a wonder. Acts chapter 13, verse 22. Implying that God is looking for such people. About David. You know he says there. He says I have found David. The son of Jesse. A man after my own heart. He will do all my will. Are you such a person? When God finds no matter your background. No matter your qualification. No matter your age. You are submissive. You know, you submit your will to his will. Ah, then that which he sent you into this world will be fulfilled to the letter. 
And you know he sent you into this world to be a wonder. Or oh, you don't know that? I and the children, the sons the Lord has given me, we are for what to oh? signs and the question is, are you submitting? That's why Paul prayed you know, to the Romans or pleaded with them. I beseech you by the mercies of God that is in the light of what we are commemorating now, in the light of what Jesus has done for you through his mercy and unconditional love, dying and I beg you I plead with you. I beseech you. Present your water, just like Jesus. Present your bodies as living sacrifices. Holy, acceptable, perfect. When you submit, then you will see the will of God fulfilled, you know, through your own life. May you be submissive. Let's bow down our heads. The miracle life of God purchased for us by Jesus at such a high price. He has come to give us life and life more abundantly. That's, that's all referencing this miracle life of God. This ultimate miracle that God wants every one of his followers to experience and enjoy and uh, used to be influencing people for Christ and his kingdom. You know, I have two questions that will lead to two calls, really. One, have you experienced this miracle life of God for yourself? Have you experienced the miracle life of God that Jesus paid for on the cross? Are you a child of God? Have you been born into the family of God? Are you an offspring of God? Does the spirit live in you and testify that you are such? Have you experienced sins forgiven? Do you know what it means for God to talk with you and you talk with him and you know he hears you? Do you know the joy of the spirit of God anywhere you are, whatever circumstances? Do you know this? Please, as all heads are bowed, this is the greatest miracle. In fact, it is the fountainhead miracle. It is the beginning of all miracles. It is the miracle that springs to be all other miracles. If you are here, you cannot truly say, I know that day when I gave my life to Jesus. When, because when it happens, you will know. Bible says, all the things will pass away. All things will become new. New. If you have not experience that or you are not very sure you want to know that you know and you are very sure I am born again I am a child of God the spirit of God lives in me and is directing me, he speaks to me he guides me, he leads me he, you know and you want that assurance please as we bow down our heads I want you to raise up your hand Yes, raise your hand. Children, raise your hands. Yes. Yes. I want to pray with you. Listen, there is nothing more wonderful on this side of eternity. Nothing more glorious. Nothing more promising than knowing this truth. All right. Yes, you children, you that raise up your hand, come, you know. Yes. Those ones at the back, come. Yes, come. Yeah, no, no, don't come here. Kneel down here. You, all of you that raise, yes. Wonderful. You know, I wanted to come with two children, the children of my pastors, you know, in the missionary church at Laketu, 
where we just moved to. They are swinging in the law. And that's what happens to anyone who knows the Lord Jesus. Kneel down. Put your hands on your head and yourself, you know, with your own mouth. Say, Jesus, you love me so much, you type. Please come into my life. Please come into my life. Yes. Each one of you, children, you are, you are sweet. You have a wonderful future. Great destiny. Beginning, especially at this young age, to make Jesus your Lord and your Savior, your shepherd, your guide. Ah, wonderful. So do that now. Talk. Open your mouth. Talk to Jesus. Say, Jesus, you love me so much. You died for me. Please, come. I want to give you my life. I want to give you my heart. I want to give you my everything. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Do that. I will pray with you. And I will pray for you. But you use your mouth to be talking to God first. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Glory to your name. Glorious day. Wonderful day. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. I want you children. Yes, close your eyes. There's nothing magic about closing eyes, but it just makes you free from distraction. You know? All right? So repeat this prayer after me. And when I say it, you say it back. My Father and my God, thank you for keeping me till today. Thank you for telling me that you love me so much and showing it by dying for my sins. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Today, today, I want to give you my heart. I want to give you my life. Take over my life. Come into my heart. Wash away all my sins. Make me clean. Put your spirit within me. And be guiding me. From now on. Write my name in the book of life. In Jesus name I pray. Alright let me pray for you now. Thank you children just listen. My father and God hears my prayer. God hears prayers. So as I pray for you now. What you have claimed. God will begin to uh, make it happen. His spirit will come into your life. Father, thank you for these young ones. They have heard your word, the good news about Jesus' death and resurrection for their sake. How he shared his blood. They watched the film. They saw how he was traumatized, torn almost to pieces beyond human recognition. And they know you did it for them. Now they have used their mouth to say they want you to come into their heart. Lord Jesus, according to your word, that you knock at anybody's heart and they open, you will come. Come right in into each one of these hearts in the name of Jesus. Take over their lives, oh God, afresh in the name of Jesus. Father, take over by your spirit. Even these lives, oh God, in the name of Jesus. From now on, oh God, write their names in the book of life. In the name of Jesus. That which you have destined for each one of them, oh God. In the name of Jesus, open doors for human resources, material, financial, all other resources, oh God. To make them be and accomplish what you have pre-programmed for each one of them. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. All right, please follow our big sister. All right, please, let's close our eyes. I want to say the second prayer. Please, you are here. You know, we are not playing games, especially after watching that film, after remembering all that Jesus did for us. And all that is asking is, will you, will you give me your heart? I had no time to analyze where the will of God is located in the human life. It's in the subconscious mind. You have two minds. Your conscious mind and then your subconscious, you know. You have no time to deal with it. 
is, that's all he's asking. Give me your heart. Give me your heart. That's who you are. You know? That's the hard drive of your life. Your conscious mind, when anything gets in there, you know, information or something that he receives, you know, you can't forget it. But with repetition of information into the conscious mind, it now filters it into the subconscious, sub, below, beneath, is below, is beneath, but it's more important. But whatever gets there, hey, becomes registered and controls your destiny and your life. That's why Jesus, the Bible says, give me your heart. That's why the Bible says also, keep diligence over your heart. Because the issues of life, you know. So, we, supposedly all of us here now, we are believers. I'm saying, God is asking just this one thing from you. Not haphazardly. Not in and out, no, but absolute surrender of your will to him is what he's asking at this season. I have given you my all and I'm looking for people like you, especially in this end time, to use, you know, to reach out to the world and bring Dying so those who are dead in sins and trespasses to Christ and his kingdom. The price, submit your will to me. That's the price. When you do this, like I said, no matter, no matter your background, no matter your qualification, no matter what you have or what you don't have, you know, ah, God will pick you up and he will begin to use you to amaze the world. In the name of Jesus. My Smuro talked about his life. He said his mother used to have books on people like Ora Roberts, people like uh, Smith Wigglesworth, and he used to read them, and he saw that these people have power. They carry power, and he was hungry for that kind of power. But he saw, he observed that with each reading of these biographies, that they would always say, there is a price you must pay. There is a price you must, just like Jesus said, you know, you must die, you know. And Ketri Kuman used to also say, that is submitting your will. And then he said he did it. At 17, you know. And as when you do that, God will give you power to live for him. He said he would pray, he would fast, he would, ah. He said he started fasting, was it at about 13 and something? And the Lord started manifesting wonders through his, at about 17. The governor, you know, it's a colonial something, that Bahamas and something. The governor called for him because at that young age, he was already leading about 5,000 people. He said, when he proved it, ah, it was then he wrote his first song. You will meet with Jesus at the other side. I mean, that's the topic of his song. That's the title of his song. When he saw that, ah, if only you can just commit your life to God and something, things will happen. Now, my, I'm talking too much, but what I'm saying is, is there any one or two or three here in these last days when God is searching, like he searched and found David, he's searching and say, will you give me your heart? Will you give me your all? Will you be totally submissive? Will you be unreservedly committed? Is there anyone I want to pray with you? That's where I am now in life. Oh, and I'm enjoying it. You know, anything he says, I do. Anywhere, anywhere he says, I go. Whatever he says, I give, I give. Ah, and I'm, it's as if I'm riding on the air now. You know, sweet will of God. You submitting your will to that sweet will. I'm asking, is there anyone who will join me at this season and say, I want to submit my total will, my whole life. Lord, take me as I am and use me in the name of Jesus. I want to see hands. Mean it from your heart. You want 
Jesus to take over all your life. Not, not just in this decision making like we, you, we, we prayed for the children. No, you are now saying, hey, anything, anything, Lord, you, you want me to do now. From now on, you know, obedience is the key. Father, thank you for these, your people. They've heard enough to be able to make this decision. As many as are deciding, like David, to say, Lord, take me as I am. I give you my heart, my will, my everything. Take me, oh God. Father, I pray. Take over their total lives. And through what you will begin to do with them and through them and for them, show to the others, oh God, their relatives, their colleagues, their classmates, their friends, and then church members, show, Lord, that it pays to be totally submissive to God. Your name will be glorified. For all of us, Lord, keep us walking in the path of truth and keep us so faithful that we will make heaven. Your name will be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and receive.